Uh, okay, let's go into running backs. This is your guy you want to start for week two, Kareem Hunt. Yeah. Tell the people why why you want to play Kareem Hunt. And is this a PPR move only, or is this what what do you say? Uh, it's PPR. Uh, obviously a little more boost since he's kind of like the pass catching back there. But in half point PPR, I'm okay with it. Standard is a little different because, um, you know, more Chubb than Hunt, I guess you could say in the in the standard area. But um. Yeah, I do like Kareem Hunt in this one. I mean, you know, they split it last week. 17 touches for Chubb, 9 for Hunt. So a little 2-1 to one, uh, area there. But, you know, this Browns offense, what they want to do is, you know, we kind of said it last year, is, you know, you, you don't want to rely on Baker throwing the ball and being like and yes. being like an Aaron Rodgers or being like a Justin Herbert throwing the ball. You know, they want to, you know, run the football, play defense, and then when they need to move the chains, you use Justin Herbert. I mean, I just uh, use Baker Mayfield. Yeah, sorry, yeah. use Baker Mayfield in the play action and stuff like that, and get it done. Uh, four rushing touchdowns last week for the Cleveland Browns. Zero passing touchdowns. So I, I do think Baker gets on the board in this one. I think he has at least one to two passing touchdowns minimum. But yeah, Jarvis the Houston, Landry rushed one in. Yeah, yeah, yeah Jarvis Landry had one. Uh, you had Chubb had two, Hunt had one, and then Landry had one. But, uh, yeah, the Houston Texans' rush defense is not very good. If you can go back to last year, you know, whenever running back was playing against the Houston Texans, you were starting that running back because the, you knew they were going to gash them. They were giving up, like, five yards per carry or something crazy like that. I don't think that they got any better, in my opinion, the rushing defense for the Houston Texans. Yeah. Now, I know James Robinson – let you down last week against the Texans when it should have been a good matchup. But I think that the Texans got up early, quick and fast, so they kind of abandoned the run, and they were trying to throw the ball so much. And then Trevor Lawrence threw three interceptions, so it was constantly like they're down, you're, you're throwing interceptions, you know, and then as soon as you get the ball back again, you're throwing another interception. So you don't really have the luxury of, like, running the football as much as you would like. Um, but in this matchup right here, Cleveland Browns at home, I think they just – shellac and rape okay okay mike 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 wanted me to say that word i just had to say it they rape the houston texans in cleveland where it's legal <laughs> and they're ahead in the third quarter they're ahead in the fourth quarter so they lean on the running game tremendously and you get a lot of chub you get a lot of hunt in the second half and, yeah, I think you start Chubb with confidence. I think you start Kareem Hunt with confidence right here. I like both these running backs. I actually like – you know what? I like Kareem Hunt even in standard leagues. Yeah. Yeah, touchdown upside. I like it. Uh, I yeah. would love to see Kareem Hunt go somewhere else and see what he could do as, like, the featured guy. Here's the thing. The Browns almost beat Because I think that he yeah. would be – I think that he would be what he was when he was with the Chiefs, as crazy as that is. You know what? I, I think that you're right. And you know what, though? I think that he kicked somebody and they screwed everything up. Yeah, but he's he's he he got like the the God's grace of like being having a second chance. He's still in the league. You know, he signed a contract extension, a small contract extension with the Browns, but I would love to see what this guy can do. Yeah. If he was with another team. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like it Miami, is. you know I'm a Miami fan, obviously. And maybe that's why I'm thinking about the first team, but and you know, and I like Gaskin, you know, but Savan Ahmed Malcolm Brown, those aren't the guys, you know. Right. We, they, they drafted Jared Dokes this year. They easily have the best running backs you know? in the league. But. Like, combo. If, if you were to tell me the Miami Dolphins signed Kareem Hunt and he would be, like, the guy, I would be stoked. Yeah, That's just no. the team that jumps off the top of my head, you know. There's obviously multiple teams that he could go to and be the guy, 100%. But I'm just saying, like, it, it, it would be nice to see what this guy could really do if he was getting 20 touches a game. Totally. So, but I digress. Yeah, and that's why I say Baker Mayfield isn't that good because he's got so many. He's got a running game. He's got a, a line. He's top got, top five O line in the got, league. He's got a good defense. He's literally has everything. I mean, his his maybe he doesn't have like the craziest wide receivers, but it's just like, I mean, dude. Yeah, dude. You can't really dude, ask for you know that why, situation, dude? and he doesn't. You know really why, dude? Because he's he's got insurance with Progressive, dude. And yeah, they got his back. Yeah, he's he's planning to fail, which yeah. is better worse than planning not planning at all. Yeah, dude. Uh okay, Damian Harris is my guy. We got the New England Patriots running back. He fa he he fumbled in the fourth quarter, ruined the game against you guys, right? Thank God. So uh but even though that happened last week, I am confident that Damian Harris is going to get it done this next week. Um, 
do you know that uh do you know who the the uh Patriots play this week? They play uh a team called the New York New The York, New York Jets. The New York Jets. The New York Jets were named after a baseball team, okay? They were they were they wanted to rhyme it with the New York Mets. That's why they're bad. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, my point is that the Jets are are, are not very good. Um, Damian uh, or Damian Harris also. What do we say? Best ability is availability, and Damian Harris had twenty five touches. That's probably I think he one in the league most um, this past week, besides Najee Harris being a hundred percent of snaps. Uh, but yeah, 25, 25 touches as a running back in week one that you love to see. That I think he 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 has a great week in uh, week two against the Jets. Set them in your lineup. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. You throw them in your flex, dude. Love it. You know what I mean? Um, and that's a that's a morning game. So, I mean, it's on Sunday. You know, it's good good, good stuff. Start your morning off well, uh, right with a little Damian Harris. Two touchdown action. Yeah, I love Damian Harris. Like you said, 25 touches. I mean, the guys, I mean, don't quote me on this, but, you know, I believe it's like he averages like five yards per carry every time he touches it. Um which is just insane. I mean, you know, one of the highest graded running backs on Pro Football Focus from last year. And, you know, the thing that really boosts his value is, you know, you, no more Sonny Michel. Uh, you know, they, they trade him away to the Rams. No more Cam Newton. You know, and exactly. it, we did a little segment where Cam Newton was like top five in terms of uh, touchdowns inside the five, top five in terms of like carries inside the five. And I don't know about you, but uh, have you ever seen that picture of Mac Jones, you know, smoking the cigar with the gut? And then Cam Newton, he's all yacked and yoded. It's like, yeah, Mac Jones is not the point. Where I'm getting there is Mac Jones is not going to be stealing yeah. those carries from inside the five. He's right not there, the new athletic know? quarterback that yeah. runs up the middle. So you know, yeah, he's not a Justin Fields. He's not a Trey Lance. You know, he's totally. not a, you know, one of these guys who can, who can run the ball. And not even a Trevor. He's not even a Trevor Lawrence. You know, he's sure. not a mobile quarterback. I'm not saying he can't move in the pocket, but he's not a guy you're going to be worrying about snaking touchdowns away from these running backs here. Um, you know, only 16 points last week for the uh, New England Patriots against the Dolphins. You know, there's going to be games where the Patriots score, you know, 30 points. And, you know, when they do score games like that and they do score 30 points, best believe a big part of that is because Damian Harris is putting up some points for you. So, yeah, I love Damian Harris going forward. I love it. He's my sacred favorite Harris running back. Uh, let's go into, whoops, week two start. You got Elijah Mitchell. You, you kind of gave me a quick anecdote on uh, Elijah Mitchell. Well, let's hear it. Yeah, so I'm just throwing Elijah Mitchell in here because I feel like it's just, you know, it's the hot name. It's the hot name on the waiver wire right now. You know, you, you know there was, you know, Trey Sermon was the surprise and inactive last week. Um, you know, then you get Raheem Oster who goes down after two carries. Boom, Elijah Mitchell, the rookie out of Louisiana, steps in. And what does he do? He comes in. He seizes the opportunity. Gets you 19 carries, 104 yards, and a touchdown. I know it was against the Lions, who don't have a very good run defense. They were actually one of the worst rush defenses last year. So just an easy matchup for him there. But I just kind of wanted to go over him and gauge him on like where you would play him or what players you would start him over compared to what players you would be sitting him over. Because, you know, like I said, he was the hot waiver Kamara. Uh, Kamara. He was the wait, hot waiver commodity. Sure. You know, I, was, I had the number one waiver wire in two leagues. I grabbed him in both leagues. Um, we're in a league where you do um, a thousand fab. So if you're in a fab league, which is free agent acquisition budgeting, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, where you basically it's a blind auction, and uh, you know you, there is no waiver order. It's whoever wants to bid the most on them gets that player, and uh, you get a thousand to start out in this league. Someone spent nine hundred and eighty out of one thousand. Is that in the FFPC? League? Yes. Oh my to God. get him, so they spent ninety eight percent of their fab to get him um i was in a league where someone spent 60 percent of their fab to get him so the point is is that if you're spending your waiver wire port number one waiver priority to get him you're spending 60 percent of your fab 98 percent like in one leagues we're in of your fab to get this guy you know you're not spending it on this guy to sit him on your bench you know it's like getting a brand new toy a brand new shiny new toy and just letting him sit in the box and not utilize them. Like you're gonna want to play him, right? So, but obviously, if you drafted, you probably have some depth. You know, depending on how you drafted, you know, you might have, you know, three, four, five, you know, if you're in the luxury, five running backs to choose from 
So it's like, who are you going to choose from? Is it Eliza Mitchell or is it this guy? Is it Eliza Mitchell or this guy? So I just kind of want to run through some running backs here because I feel like if you got him, he should be the guy. Um, I do think that they activate Trey Sermon, who was a healthy scratch last week. I do believe they activate him to the lineup next week. He'll get a little utilization, but I do still feel confident in Elijah Mitchell to be the guy because they felt confident enough to bring him up to the lineup in week one compared to Trey Sermon, compared to Jermichael Hasty. He was the guy who, uh, not Jam- was it Jermichael Hasty? Is that his name? Jermichael Hasty? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They felt more comfortable for Mitchell to be the guy over those other guys. So, if I have him, I'm playing him is basically what I'm saying. But just going over some names here. So let's say you have Elijah Mitchell or Chase Edmonds. Who are you playing? Hmm. Cardinals are at home against the Vikings. Yeah, I'm going to say I might. Uh, is Trey Sermon playing or no? Uh, that's not official yet, but I would assume Trey Sermon's playing. Then if Trey Sermon's full, I go, full go, I might go Chase Edmonds. Yeah. I don't like it, but yeah. See, I'm going Eliza Mitchell there because I I mean. I don't know if that, yeah, I don't know if that hurts your argument, but. Yeah. Uh, you're going Elijah Mitchell or Miles Gaskin. The Dolphins are playing at home against the Bills. By the way, I wasn't asking whether or not Trey Sermon is going to play. I was asking, like, in this scenario. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um or or who's Devin Singletary you said? Um, Elijah Mitchell or Miles Gaskin? Miles Gaskin. Yeah, the Dolphins are at home against the Bills. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go Elijah Mitchell. Yeah, I'm gonna go Elijah Mitchell on that one. And, and you know, I'm a Dolphins fan, and I do love Miles Gaskin. I'm a little, yeah. a little biased on that one, but uh, yeah, Elijah Mitchell. But that one's tough. Um, you go on Elijah Mitchell because these are just some of the names that he's around right here. Um, you going Elijah Mitchell or Daryl Henderson Jr.? The Rams are against the Colts. It's in Indianapolis. I'm gonna go Elijah Mitchell. <sighs> See, that's that's uh, in, that's kind of where I draw the line right there. That's so tough. Yeah. yeah, that's so tough right there. Because um, Daryl Henderson looks so good in that second half of that game against the the Bears the other day. Uh, but I mean, you know, in Indianapolis, in Indianapolis against the Colts. That's not an easy game either. Uh, tough matchup there. That one's tough right there for me. Uh, I'm almost like flip a coin. I feel like that's yeah, so crazy. But uh, yeah, I don't even know if I can give you an answer on that. No, that, one, that one's tough. That one's really tough. Um, yeah, that, one, that one's tough. I think I might go Daryl Henderson slightly, but that one's tough. Uh, one more, just kind of, you know, like I said, I just wanted to gauge where you're kind of ranking yeah, Elijah it. Mitchell that's compared it. to some of these like middle tier running backs. Cause I feel like obviously you have guys, you know, you have like your top 10 running backs, you know, you have Swift, Carson, Jonathan Taylor, Montgomery, um, you know, CEH, those kind of guys where you're playing, you're, guys. you're starting those guys, you know, you're not, you're not benching those guys. But now when you get into the names of, like I said, Daryl Henderson, Miles Gaskin, Chase Edmonds, those are kind of some guys where you're like, okay, do I start the him or Elijah Mitchell? So okay. that's what I just want to go I, over. But can I ask one? I'm yeah. Curious. Yeah. Okay. You want to say yours? Uh, no, yeah, I'll go with my last one. Uh, Elijah Mitchell or Miles Sanders? The Eagles are at home against the 49ers. So in game matchup, Elijah Mitchell, Niners, Miles Sanders, Eagles, in that game. Who do you who do you want? Uh, I'm gonna go Mitchell. I'm gonna go Mitchell on that one too. Okay, can I ask you one? Ask you one. Yeah. Melvin Gordon or Elijah Mitchell? No, oh, Mitchell. It's not even close. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You didn't like that one, but yeah. okay. So how about this? I'll, I will just say I'll take Mitchell over Mike Davis. I will take Mitchell over Melvin Gordon. Just give people ideas, you know, over any Jets running back. You know, I'll take a Damian Harris over Mitchell, but yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, yeah, all right. So yeah, I just seen like you said, you know, you're, yeah. you're spending fab on this guy. You know, you're spending a high waiver priority on this guy. So I just feel like if you get him, you're thinking like you you yeah. want to play him, right? You you didn't you didn't waste all this you know priority in, in fab on a guy to not play, not play him. him. So I guess uh, I was just story. trying to see where you know where your head was at and where my head was at in terms of who we'd be playing him over and not stuff like that. So yeah, subscribe. What'd you say? You said you liked that video and it was really informative and now you want to subscribe so you can win your fantasy football league? 
Okay. Go ahead. You wish that we would live stream and answer fantasy football questions every Sunday before the games? Okay, they sure do. AVG Fantasy Football has your back. Did you get what I did there? It was a little door to explore, a little little back and forth. Like we weren't actually talking, but you thought maybe. Maybe you did. Yeah, we no, you thought. Yeah, I convinced you. It's called acting. What else did you say? You said that you want to be able to call in while we do live streams? Hey, should I start McCaffrey? Well, yeah, you here, here it is. This is an example of what's going to happen. Hello? Yes, uh, I'm curious. Should I uh, should I start Dalvin Cook? Then this is us. Uh, yeah, obviously you should play Dalvin Cook because Dalvin Cook's like really good. So I'd say, I mean, it is matchup proof. So put him put him in your lineup. It's that damn easy. And then bam, you won your fantasy football league that week. But yeah, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to see more videos just like this. If you want to see us answer questions live uh, every Sunday before the games start. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you know right when we drop content for you to win your fantasy football league.